This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Thanks so much for tuning in on this Monday here at KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio's News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Stacy Jensen. It's Monday, May 16th. Well, two people were transported this morning following a rollover crash on Mance Road. The crash happened on Mance Road between Hafen Ranch Road and State Route 160. That's where an SUV went off the roadway and overturned. Two people inside the vehicle were able to get out before Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene. Both were transported to Desert View Hospital for treatment of their injuries. Once again, the Nye County Sheriff's Office will determine what caused this crash. And a two-vehicle crash at a Pahrump intersection leaves some property damage, but no serious injuries. The Nye County Sheriff's Office and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched to a two-vehicle crash Sunday morning at the intersection of State Route 160 and Basin Avenue in Pahrump. The crash between a pickup truck and a sport utility vehicle left both with some damage, but no one claimed any injuries at the time. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is investigating. And a few hours later after that crash, first responders were called out to another crash here in town. This one at the intersection that's seen its share of crashes. Sunday afternoon, the Nye County Sheriff's Office and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched to a two-vehicle crash at the intersection of State Route 372 and Barney Street. That's where an SUV and a pickup truck collided. The SUV sustained heavy front-end damage, but no one involved claimed any injuries at the time of the crash. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is investigating. And Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, along with Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, responded to a large fire on Saturday afternoon on Dutch Ford Road. Upon arrival, they observed a black smoke column that was the result of tires that had been set ablaze. Fire crews extinguished that fire without further incident. We'll be back with more News 25 right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Lisa Spahitz and Mike Plasmeyer at Country Financial Insurance. Auto, home, life, and commercial. 775-727-8920. Welcome back. Well, one person received what has been described as minor injuries as a result of an ATV crash that happened off Game Bird Road near Winchester over the weekend. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, as well as Nevada Highway Patrol, arrived on scene to find a smaller off-road vehicle that had reportedly rolled. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue medics attended to that patient. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies conducted that accident investigation. And a prompt man is under arrest and facing several felony charges after allegedly forging and cashing two checks. Brad Francis has the details. Christopher Doyle has been booked into the Nye County Detention Center on two counts of burglary of a business, two counts of forgery, and two counts of abuse of an older or vulnerable person. His arrest comes after an investigation by the Nye County Sheriff's Office. On April 26, the deputy was dispatched to the Office of No to Abuse on South Blag Road in Pahrump regarding a report of elder abuse and exploitation. The female victim told officers that Christopher Doyle was writing himself checks and using her checkbook without her permission. The victim provided copies of two checks made out to Doyle, but she advised she did not write or sign those checks. Both were dated last October, one for $300, the other for $150. Investigators determined those checks had been cashed at a local business, which was able to provide officers a photo of the person who cashed them and a photo of that person's ID, which was Doyle's. Deputies located Doyle, and he was taken into custody without incident. Well, the students at the J4NG program at Pahrump Valley High School are throwing their support behind the Southern Nye County Search and Rescue by making a generous donation. News 25 was on hand for that presentation. Last time you guys came in, we really enjoyed the presentation. We learned a lot about Search and Rescue that we had no clue about. Um, we raised a lot of money this year and we wanted, um, we thought it'd be a good idea to help you guys out. Because um, we want to help you guys when you guys are helping other people. So, because the money we raised, we would like to give you a donation. 
We actually do a snack cart here at our school. Um, we only do everything is a dollar, but with everyone being at lunch, we soak a lot. We've been doing it all year long. We were taking it to both lunches, yeah. so that's where we raised mm -hmm. most of the money. They gave us a check by uh, raising some money uh, and donating to us. We did a presentation uh, earlier in the year for them uh, to describe what we do and how we're all volunteers and how we have uh, zero support except for the, the community and the, uh, the patrons of the school and also of the city. Check was for $2,000, yes. which is awesome. Makes me feel good. I'm glad that I'm helping my community. We're uh, another arm of the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. If someone comes up missing or we need to, uh, the Sheriff's feels that we have to be called out for evidence search or uh, do patrols like we did during COVID to make sure like the schools were safe. Uh, just to an assistant of the deputies mm -hmm. uh, as far as the patrols during COVID but if someone comes up missing, then we're activated by the Sheriff's Department through the dispatch. Besides our packs, um, we have vehicles, ATVs, um, our drone unit, our equestrian unit. Um, we use a lot of equipment. Uh, we have a lot of different specialty units that are constantly either needing maintenance, paint, um, upgrades, things like that. We are a 501c3, mm -hmm. so it's all tax deductible. Uh, you can either come down to our unit, we're there for training and business meetings on the first Thursday and third Thursday of every month. Uh, you can also look us up on the, the web. We have a web page out there, uh, Southern Nye County Inc. Uh, and then uh, just there's a donation button on there. You can actually donate or you can actually call the unit's number. J4G is an employment preparation class, so you learn how to write resumes and essays. Um, you learn how to count money because some people don't know how to count money. You learn how to um, file taxes. You do interviews, um, just things to help you once you get out of high school, things you're going to have to do as an adult. We um, are wrapping up our year and everything, but we've raised a lot of money. We've done a lot of things for school. We do like teacher appreciation um, weeks and stuff, and we'll help with that. And I think just overall this year has been really good as far as us trying to make an impact on this school. I've made a lot of new friends as well, so that helps. I've gotten out of my comfort zone a little bit. I'm a very shy person, so helped me a lot. There's a lot that I had no idea how to do before. I mean, I'm a junior and I already know how I want to apply for scholarships and how to do things like that that I had no clue before the school year. And Memorial Day is just two weeks from today and there will be several special events in that day and Pahrump to mark this special solemn occasion. U.S. Air Force veteran Dr. Tom Waters gives us a preview of what's happening. We want everybody to remember, remember that it's not a celebration, it's a day of remembrance. Anything to say thank you to all of our veterans for all that they have done for our country. And the VFW is going to be first. They have at 10 o'clock, they'll have a ceremony at the VFW post. And we'd, we're encouraging everyone to come out for that. And then at 11 o'clock, they're going to have the flag retirement ceremony. That's where they actually take the American flags that have been worn and they actually retire them. The Boy Scouts normally are there to help and uh, they, they've always done a wonderful job in the past. I'm not sure exactly how the VFW is planning it uh, this time, but it, again, the community is, is there to support exactly what happens when we retire the flags. Never throw the American flags away. That's why we have the retirement ceremonies. And yes, if you have a, an old flag, an old tattered flag, you'd like to get, you need to get rid of it and replace it, then you can drop off the old flag at the, uh, at the VFW post, or you can take it to the Veterans Memorial, and there's a, a mailbox dropped there, and you can put it in that mailbox. After that, the flag, uh, flag burning ceremony, then we have one in the evening. This is the DAV, the Disabled American Veterans and that will be at the Veterans Memorial at the Chief Tacopa Cemetery. That's a sundown program, and it goes from six to seven. We have a special keynote speaker. He's also the chairman of our county commission, uh, Frank Carbone, and uh, he is the speaker this year. So many events happening now, right? So many, and I'm so excited for a three-day weekend. It is gonna be fun, yeah. and all those Memorial Day events. We're gonna have some more information about veterans events in the coming days. But right now, we're gonna take a break. News 25 will return in just a moment. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. 
Well, parents across the country are growing concerned about the baby formula shortage, which is showing no signs of improving. So what can they do to help ensure their little ones get the food they need? All our pediatricians were receiving numerous calls from parents concerned about that they can't find their specific formula brand or formula for their babies. Uh, it's not on the shelves. What we want them to do is we want them to look for a similar, similar brand, may not be the same brand, and try a generic. Dr. Richard So is a pediatrician for Cleveland Clinic Children's. He says it is perfectly safe for parents to buy generic brands of baby formula instead, especially since the ingredients are very similar. The same applies to formulas designed for babies with sensitivities. Dr. So says liquid formula is another safe alternative. However, it is generally a little more expensive. As far as buying formulas off the internet, he says that's fine as long as they're from a reputable U.S. company company that is FDA regulated. He also discourages making homemade formulas, supplementing with cow's milk, or diluting store-bought formula. When parents can't find it, they're going to try and stretch out like a store brand formula and maybe diluting it. That's very dangerous to your baby as well because formulas are very uh, balanced from a micronutrients and electrolyte standpoint. Dr. So says part of the problem is many parents are starting to hoard baby formula, so he advises only buying about two weeks worth at a time. That way there's enough for others in need. And we have learned late this afternoon that the Food and Drug Administration has reached an agreement with a Abbott Laboratories to reopen the shuttered uh, formula manufacturer buildings there and that they say that it will be in about two weeks that they will begin production and so that they can catch up on that baby formula. All right, it's time to meet another pet available for adoption from one of our local shelters. Today we're back inside the cat room at Desert Haven Animal Society where Darby introduces us to Snow. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society and today we are joined with Snow. Snow is this gorgeous all white kitty beautiful, beautiful, really light colored mint green eyes, super duper cute, cuddly, um, does really well with people, children, and dogs. Um, prefers to only be the kitty cat in the home though. Um, so if you're looking for a very spoiled, all white kitty cat with beautiful eyes and just loves purring and attention, I think Snow is your cat. Could definitely come and see her and all of our friends here in the cat room at Desert Haven Animal Society. You can give them a call at 775 751-7020. You can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. And Snow just wants to remind everyone that they're now open seven days a week for adoptions. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All I know is heat. That's all I know. That's right. Temperatures are climbing. A couple of clouds out there, but otherwise, there's some warm weather ahead. John's going to have his full update in just a moment. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Lovely to see you on a Monday. It was a heck of a weekend for me. I don't know how you made out, but boy, this uh, week of weather ahead is certainly looking promising. Fernley and Fallon up in the uh, mid-80s. Carson City at 78 is the coolest spot you can find in the state. Every place else, man, we're cooking. Tell you what, Tonopah 81, 84 out in Goldfield. It's 93 in Beatty. Amargosa hitting uh, boy band temperatures at 98 degrees. And it's 101 in Las Vegas, the winter winter chicken dinner. I think first time they hit triple digits this year, too. So out in Death Valley, 108 degrees. Wow, it's just another plain day out in Death Valley. But here in the Paradise of Pahrump, 94 degrees, feeling pretty good. 96 a little bit earlier felt just a smidge better winds kindly out of the south southwest all day long nine miles per hour felt really great sun rose this morning at 5 36 setting this evening about quarter to eight it'll be so great 7 44 will be precise how about that heading down for a low tonight of 63 degrees that sounds actually 
pretty pleasant. Uh, winds uh, continuing out of the southeast to nine miles per hour as we head into our Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What do we see? Look at this. Sun shining on me the whole dang week. Look at that. Winds uh, completely uh, reasonable. Other than Thursday, maybe it'll get up about 16 miles per hour. Temperatures in the mid-90s, uh, upper 80s and uh, mid-90s. What, we get to 99 degrees on Monday? That's going to be spectacular. Sun shining on me. Uh, get out by the pool, get yourself a glass of iced tea. Stay hydrated. It's going to be a roaster. All right, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. You know, it's going to continue to get warmer. It is, but you know what? That's okay. <laughs> We're going to deal with it. We are. There's people that are We're riding prepared. motorcycles that have to deal with some of the heat out there. You know, I know they do. worried about them. Kind of complain a lot, though, don't they? I know they do. <laughs> We're talking about our tech director. Talking about Romano. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, we hope everybody had a happy Monday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. I'm Deanna. I'm Stacy Jensen. Good night.